So again, my name is John Reagan. I'm here to talk to you about how we're porting the OpenVMS operating system to x86 using LLVM. So 40 years ago next week, before most of you were born, Digital Equipment Corporation um, introduced the VAX 32-bit architecture. Um, while Berkeley was moving BSD Unix from PDP-11 to the VAX, Digital had its own operating system called VMS. So VAX VMS eventually ended up with many compilers, Ada, Bliss, C, C++, COBOL, Fortran. Uh, Bliss is the digital system implementation language. Uh, the operating system was written mostly in VAX assembly and in Bliss. Uh, fast forward to, I can touch the, hard to, Fast forward to 1992, um, VAX was hitting the limits of its data size, so digital created the alpha 64-bit RISC architecture and we ported the VMS operating system to it. We also created a new multi-language, multi-target backend named GEM. The GEM IR provides a rich set of data types used by the front ends and a common interface for command line processing, source file access, debug generation, and so forth. Uh, we also invented a Macro32 compiler to allow the continued use of VAX assembly that was widespread in the operating system and in many customer sites. And then by the late 1990s and early 2000s, digital was bought by Compaq, Compaq was bought by HP, and Alpha was put aside in favor of Itanium. So Gem got an Itanium target, we switched to Elf and Dwarf, we took the Intel C++ compiler on Itanium and used that, and we added yet another Macro32 compiler to convert Alpha, I mean VAX instructions, to Itanium instructions. So here's a picture of how the compilers look today on Itanium. Bunch of front ends hooked into the Gem IR, producing executables. Should look very familiar to people who use a common code generator. So going forward to x86-64, uh, in 2014, um, sorry. By 2014, VMS had transitioned, um, HP had transitioned VMS mostly to a maintenance mode, but the end of Itanium uh, was a problem for many VMS customers. So a new company, VMS Software, was started, and we licensed the code from HP with the goal of going forward to newer hardware. Uh, but with smaller headcount, we were really unable to use the gem backend that we were, uh, we were using in the past. So looking around at options, we were going to use LLVM as the backend, but we still wanted to keep our front ends to preserve source code compatibility. So we wrote a gem IR to LLVM IR converter. And for C++, since I couldn't use the Intel solution, we are going to use Clang. So here's a picture of how it looks, what we're doing now. Just a simple converter between the gem IR, all the front ends still think they're generating and talking to gem. Instead, we're actually talking to LLVM. And for our macro compiler, we use the gem MC inst interface. I mean, the LLVM MC inst. So here's where gem meets LLVM, things we had to do. Um, the converter is mostly straightforward once we got the hang of the IR. Um, dumping out bit code on a Linux box is very helpful to us. Um, gem data types and, um, are a little more higher level than LLVM, so the, the uh, converter had to do some interesting transformations for various for strings in particular. Uh, VMS strings are either null terminated or a variable length with a length word, uh, or even by a string descriptor. So for the ABI, VAX and Alpha have their own proprietary calling conventions. Uh, for Itanium, we use the Intel runtime one, we tweaked it for VMS, and for x86, we're using the AMD64 one, again, with a few tweaks for VMS. So, some of the things we've had to change for LLVM, uh, VMS is a mixed pointer size operating system. We have both 32 and 64-bit pointers. You can mix and match in the same program, same routine even. Uh, that has exposed some deficiencies in static pointer initialization. Uh, there are some um, uh, ELF additions we've had to make for doing link time expressions for two re relocatable symbols, uh, some changes to the ABI for arc count and arc info, yet another Macro32 compiler, uh, this time using some um, memory rectors for pseudo registers and some stuff for that, and then a machine code listing file, which uh, includes source code, uh, macro expansions, um, general machine code, essentially a collection of everything that it sees. Uh, for Clang, we'll use Clang. We'll have to add a lot of VMS um, to it. We haven't started yet. We've been talking about it. Uh, for challenges, uh, we've had to use an older LLVM in Clang since the C++ compiler we have is C++03 only. Uh, the tools we have, uh, VMS hosted GNU tools, are only supported by a small group of people. Um, we have headers and RTLs we have to merge together, and there's going to be a lot of pounding on the um, Clang driver to deal with the uh, VMS file name syntax, I suppose. On the current status, the C and Bliss compilers are 99% complete. Uh, macro compilers a little farther behind. We can currently boot the operating system into a debug uh, 
uh, Colonel Debugger uh, with a full boot scheduled for the first half of 2018. So if you have any more questions, uh, find me at the event later tonight. Thank you.